Hey guys, welcome to Cat Attacks Life, this brand new episode. Bah, 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 bah. We are back. Josh, say something. On say this word. episode, we attack our friendship. Wow. Wow. <laughs> with a steel chair. <laughs> we talk about a lot of things, right? Here comes Cat with a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> Not the table. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about a lot of things in this episode i hope you guys have fun listening to it we're using this card game uh, from the end i'm gonna have a link in the description box below so you can figure out how to order the same game uh it's a lot of fun we're probably gonna do a multi uh, multi-part series based on this card game we just tell our stories and like um how our friendship has affected our lives and all that good fluffy warm stuff so tune in for that or keep listening and don't forget all the links all that good stuff thank you so much for being here and yeah let's attack life (laughs) hey what's up guys welcome back to cat attacks life to this brand new episode yay we're still here unfortunately i'm kidding so (laughs) why (laughs) by the time this episode comes out uh it's going to be January for you guys. We're still recording in December, so, you know, we can't... We're literally, like, in the past, in the future. So, um, by the way, this is... Josh is still here with me. If you hadn't guessed already. It's <laughs> 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 so like Hunger Games. <laughs> the actual music. <laughs> yeah, was it? Uh, no, it's not. That's not, like. that's not what it sounds like. It's like when uh, Katniss and Peter walk into the... Uh, the games and it's like what district one or something yeah yeah i know it. yeah yeah so you guys are gonna be listening to this in january we're back in december um so we're going back <laughs> to the future um <laughs> as you can tell this one's gonna be a little bit different than our usual topics uh we already have amped up our friendship yeah friendship way levels. so our normal episodes were very very it's us. You know how we are by now. But this is a <laughs> special episode. This is going to be our special super duper super duper friendship episode where <laughs> we're going to be asking each other questions from this card game. Uh, what's it called? <clears throat> you want to... Um, this is not an ad, but I did buy this card game. Um, it's called The And. If you guys have seen ads on Instagram or YouTube, it's basically a connecting uh, card game with a bunch of questions on it. They have versions for your friends, family, and your lover. So all these questions are meant to connect the person you're talking to, asking questions to. I'm going to put down the link to this podcast on YouTube and uh, in the description box for uh, that and game, card game. Uh, It's called, let me see the site here. I probably have a channel too. Uh, The skindeep.com slash shop. And then you can purchase the game there if you guys are interested. We're asking each other uh you know it's it's there's a bunch of cards in here probably over like 100 150 so we're asking each other questions that we've handpicked so the game is not like this but um for time's sake and co- uh, content that we are deciding to you know speak on and not speak on we're gonna play it safe and just ask each other questions that yes. we picked ourselves at this point in time there are <laughs> topics that we would like to avoid Considering <laughs> our personal <laughs> situations with very specific other people. Hush, hush. And we'll keep that very hush, hush until <laughs> the time that we can talk about it. Yeah. So, Well, in this space, we're going to uh, connect in this uh, t- podcast and, and ask each other these awesome questions involving our friendships and stories. And we're going to tell stories to you guys that you probably think are were mental or crazy, but... It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to know each other a little more than we usually would normally have do <laughs> outside of this podcast, which is like regularly. I was like, how are we going to know each other even more so? There are things yeah. that you've told me and I've told you. How strong is this super glue? <laughs> what? How strong is this super glue? We're already friends. We're like best friends. Oh, I was yeah. a metaphor. Sorry. Uh, if you can compare a friendship to super glue, which brand would it be? Ooh. Go. That's not even a question on the, on the card game. <laughs> I just wanted to What's know. What's that Gorilla Glue? Mm. I feel like that would be it. Which one? I'm sorry. I don't have firsthand knowledge <laughs> of glue manufacturers. That are in my head right now. I'm sorry. Uh, that this one. is when I bring in my hobby of uh, <clears throat> sniffing glue. Like, no. Well. Mm, tasting it. <laughs> Jesus. I don't eat glue. 
Okay. <laughs> glue huffer. <laughs> we got a glue huffer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those kids in school who have like that they eat glue. I don't know if you ever ran into it when you're in kindergarten. No, I only. I sp- have. Really? Yeah. Was it you? Someone? No. <laughs> <laughs> surprise! Surprise! It was not me, but I do remember someone in class eating glue. And I was just like, "That's a thing. That's a real thing." Because I remember watching it on. Like, it's cartoons. like a trend. Like a trend. Yeah. It's like people are still doing that. <laughs> That's so last year. It's like when I was. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like nine years old in kindergarten. We're like, on sniffing markers now, that? man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started. Uh, Josh, take the lead with the first question that you have chosen. My okay. first question is a trap card. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> trap hole. Okay, so the first question. We're, we're so the way this is gonna work is that we'll ask each other these questions, um, and obviously one of us will answer it, and then maybe we'll go on to discuss the opposite side of it. Mm-hmm. So that way it's more of a conversation than us just being like, "Hey, like uh, like for time." <laughs> for time's sake, yeah. Seconds to answer this question. Yes. No. <coughs> okay. First question. <laughs> what do you think is the hardest thing about the choices I've made? See, we're getting deep. Okay. okay. Hardest choices? What? What's the hardest thing about the choices that I've made? Uh, the willingness to to be in that situation. The willingness, the readiness, the the feeling uh, like you have to take this on, but the want to take this on as well. That's I think that's for you the hardest thing. Expand. <sighs> like you're... Josh is a very strong personality. If you don't know him personally, he's a very strong personality. We have this balance, I do believe. But for you, the hardest thing with your choices is that, you know, you're wholeheartedly ready to be in it. Like, you have no... uh, To you, there's no choice sometimes. Sometimes. I'm not saying all the times. But Mm -hmm. I think the hardest thing, when you put yourself in a situation, that's where you uh, are so steadfast and ready to be in. Sometimes it can hurt you. Sometimes it has hurt you. And, <clears throat> like, it's hard for you to, like, you know, maneuver out of it once you've completely put your heart in it. Oof. True. The hard-hitting ones. Yeah, she's I right. Don't think that's, I don't think that's hard-hitting. I mean, it's quality. Mm, yeah, I'm very much... Uh, put my whole heart into everything <laughs> that I do. And that's a good thing. Yeah, kind of wear Sometimes my heart on my happens. sleeve. Right. So... <clears throat> For you, no. Are we gonna go back and forth about this? If you want, okay. Well, we'll see. But um, for you and your choices, I think the hardest thing would be the the dichotomy of your confidence. Mm. You know. Yeah. Well, so you're very very confident. You exude Not all the time. Well, I mean, from what you exude to other people, and especially to what I've seen over the past couple of years, very very confident. And this is where you and I might be similar, but it also bears down into into, um, into arrogance sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the hardest thing about the choices that you make. I'm making the best choice I've ever made, and no one's going to tell me Isn't otherwise. I love that, though. And it's like, that's, <laughs> yeah, it <clears throat> comes from the, the confidence aspect of you. And I think that's the hardest thing is that once you have made that choice, it's uh, it's very similar. Yeah. It's very similar to how we I how I am. You know, I put my whole heart into things, and then you have the confidence to make sh- to s- not see that decision or choice as being anything other than good. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, we share qualities. We share qualities. Clearly. Oh God! All right. So my next question, or my my question next. <laughs> what was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Go ahead and write your essay in 100 more words. Right. Really, 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 really. <laughs> very, really. Very, really excited to be amazed by this opportunity. Okay, so <laughs> here's a question. What was the experience that connected us the best and why? Um, band. Oh. That's the thing. Was. That's what started it all, and that was the experience that really just made us. I don't remember if you remember this. mm Wait, what? <laughs> Yo, I don't. Th- I don't remember. <laughs> I don't, I don't think, think you remember this, ah. but so it was sixth grade when we met. Um, we both played in trumpet. 
We played trumpet in middle school. We played trumpet. We were the best trumpet players at that middle school. It was so much fun. Ain't nobody better than us. <laughs> but um, we met, and I do believe that you told me later on that you actually had a crush on me. Yes. Yeah, and that's yes. how the whole friendship started because you were the one who initiated it. Um, very introverted back in middle school. Who wasn't? So, mm. But you initiated it, and we had conversations, and we bonded over playing trumpet, and she was always third chair, and I was always fourth chair. Third and fourth. And... It rarely ever changed because of her work ethic versus mine and how serious we took it or <laughs> how serious I took it. It was fun. It was fun. And I relished in the moments yep. where I was third chair and she was fourth chair. Because we would always be next to each other. And then we did that, decided to do like jazz band. Jazz band. Which made it even easier to be around each other mm-hmm. and then bond. Yeah. I do remember that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was kind of embarrassed because like, you're my best friend. Like, I mean, that's how yeah. things start out. Sometimes... Uh, what you intended doesn't necessarily happen, but something better comes out of it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you're also very gay now. Very, very gay. So <laughs> <laughs> gay trumpets. She's got banners everywhere, confetti. It's all yeah. rainbow colored. So, yeah. So yeah, I think that band was a really good time. Band was so, it's so nostalgic when I think about it. Like, there was that was the time i felt like in our middle school if we didn't go to that middle school we'd be different people if we didn't oh, have for that sure. if we didn't have that foundation of like this is a team this is a band we play together and we harmonize it's like a life lesson subconsciously i love that mm-hmm. and everyone like for the most part got along shout out to our band teacher he was the best mr dane mr he's Danes. still teaching he's still there he's a great teacher i think our school Turned into a performing arts school because, because of, of the great music programs. Yep. I will single handedly say that it is because of him. Um, the way he treated his students, the way that he saw things, and the way he was everyone's friend. He was very he didn't friendly. Want to make an enemy. Like he wasn't strict in that he way. He was very respectful. Yeah. He very rarely ever got mad at us, and if he did, it was very justified. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, shout out to Mr. Danes. Shout out to Mr. Danes if you're listening. We love you. Love you. We wouldn't be the people that we are today mm, with that for sure next question next question i think i picked this one because it's funny describe the moment <laughs> you nearly died Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh nearly died oh yes i have bad motion sickness and this was this is recent where i figured this out um I, I took a few flights before um, a few years ago, but there was one trip that we'll never forget. And this, I don't know if you listened to the last episode, guys. It was, uh, this was during my health. Like, I was obsessed with my health. If the oh, last yeah. episode, you guys don't listen to it, listen to it, please. But I talk about my journey here. When I went on this plane ride, I didn't eat anything. I was fasting. I was fasting that day to go on a plane. Did I think anything of it? Mm, bad idea. Nope. I also didn't know that there was going to be an effect to it because before, like, I didn't have motion sickness. So it kind of uh, was a double combo of, like, you didn't eat anything. You don't feel as good. And, by the way, your equilibrium is is, is messed up, so Mm -hmm. you're going to feel sick when you're on a plane. I got on the plane. uh, First, it was, like, two different planes. The first one was fine. The second one was shorter, which meant it's going high up really fast and back down really fast. The back down, well, actually, the going up made me sick mm-hmm. to the point where I had to put something in my ears because I wanted to distract myself from feeling sick. Because the more we were going, the more that I was like, it was, is the plane was going higher and higher and higher. I was like, okay, this not, this is not. It's like this is not the business. All I was watching Justice League, so I was distracted <laughs> by Wonder Woman. But um <laughs> side note, cat's cat is currently on the table causing all kinds of mayhem. So Oh my god. Ugly. Ugly. So I was feeling sicker and sicker and sicker as the plane started high. I was I closed my eyes and I was having hot flashes. I was sweating. I was dying. Like I couldn't even talk to my mom who was right next to me because I felt like I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I was like, Mom, mom, mom. I was like trying to get her attention she's like what is going on i was like it can't 
breathe. Like I literally could not talk. I could not speak. I had was sweating in my seat and I felt it because I was wearing shorts mm. into the leather seat. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm going to die up here. Like when <laughs> is this flight going to end? Um, as we started descending so bad, I felt like I, I was watching myself turn pale. Like I, I, uh, my skin was like, was getting whiter. Like I felt myself sweating. I try to close my eyes and try to like stomach the fact that like, I don't know what's happening. Did I know? Is it because I didn't eat what's happening? Yeah. Later on, obviously I didn't eat. So that, that was a big factor in why I felt so sick. But at the same time, like from that point on, I, I recognized that I had motion sickness mm -hmm. on a plane so bad. And I had, I went up to go when the plane landing, I went up to go to the bathroom cause we were still waiting. Uh, there was a flight attendant across from me and I didn't want to make any eye contact cause I didn't want her to ask any questions, whatever. It's not a big deal. I just need to get off of this fucking plane cause I feel sick and I need to eat something. Yeah. I go to the bathroom, okay, walk out. Like, I feel her staring at me and, like, worried. I caught a glimpse of her face. She was like, what? You know what I mean? Like, she didn't even know what was happening, but I didn't want to make a big scene or whatever. I don't want to ask her, but I could feel that she was staring at me, and I was not looking good. Mm -hmm. My mom was so, like, ready for us to, like, leave and get food as fast as she could. She's like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because I was feeling, like terrible that's the first time i've ever gotten motion sickness mm -hmm. and then the first time i ever felt like i was going to die like from that plane yeah. plane ride it was terrible so yeah that's when i uh was what was the question like moment that you nearly Describe died yeah, the that was you nearly died. literally when i nearly died is because that uh not knowing that i had motion sickness that sent and not eating because i'm stupid yeah yeah <laughs> I have something similar to that, uh, not necessarily. So this goes back to also my health phase. And uh, when I was trying out new things, I had taken this um, <laughs> supplement in the early morning. Oh, okay. Do you remember the story? I don't know if I, I told you this one. It was really so, bad. Um, Sundays usually at the, at the time that I took the supplement, I would have church early in the morning, like 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, right? And so the supplement that I was taking was like an energy supplement. And I was like, cool, I want to try this. And it said, the way you take it is you take this pill, this pill, this pill, and this pill. It was like a packet <laughs> in this order throughout the day. The yeah. first one you take is as soon as you wake up. I'm like, cool, I got this. In the middle of service. <laughs> oh, yeah, you told me about I this. I told you yes. this one. It hits me hard. And what I failed to understand is that it was actually a, a pill that had a uhimbe, is which is basically like a cardio stimulant. Oh, it's my supposed God. to help with energy. Yeah. Boy, did it help with energy. Didn't you? Or you're supposed to just be sitting there and silent, right? Yeah, when you're going, like in church, you're just sitting there, you're listening, and you're not really doing much. But it told me, take this in the morning for energy. Oh, I'm my like, God. Okay. When I tell you that I was sitting, it was like 75 degrees, and I was sweating through my suit, just dripping. <laughs> you were like on like crack? That's what it felt like. Yeah. And I was wondering to myself, I'm like, I'm never taking this ever again. That's what the terrible. hell? And How then, long did that last? Uh, it lasted the whole entire time uh. for like four or five hours. <gasps> we had a meeting, um, like a little church meeting with all, all the teenagers and the group and whatnot, the youth. And I remember giving part of a presentation, a part of the meeting. And one of them came up to me after me because I had my jacket off and it was just me and my white shirt and I rolled up the sleeves. He's sweating. <laughs> he came up to me. He's like, are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, it looks like you're sweating pretty bad. You all right? I'm like, totally, man. I'm fine. Oh, my God. And I l thought at that point in time I was going to have a heart you attack. You didn't leave? It's not that I couldn't leave. It's that I was just like, I'm just going to ride it. What could I do? There was nothing that I could possibly <sighs> Drink do. Water, Drink water. Drink water, sure. Yeah. But it wasn't. I wasn't dehydrated. I was just wired. Ugh. So, side note, make sure that you guys are very aware of what supplements you take. Yeah. And what not to take. Eat food, too. <laughs> Eat food. Don't take it on empty stomachs if you're not prepared for what's going to happen. Oh, God. That's crazy. Yeah. Ouch. Moment I Four or five died. hours. That's terrible. It is terrible. Next question. That's you. No, that's you. Oh, wait. <laughs> Next question. What is your favorite memory of us, and why is it important to you? Cool. <laughs> You mean like every memory? Mm. Uh, gay. Yeah, like you're gay. <laughs> Give me a second. Do you want to answer that one first? Because I got to think. Okay. Favorite memory of us? Favorite memory of us? 
shoot. There's a lot of staples. Like, there's a lot of, like, moments in time where I was just like, yeah, this is great. Um, I think every... During senior year, it was very easy to pinpoint when. Because it was, like, almost the end. End of an era, right? Because we, me and Josh have been in school for since middle school and then the end of high school. So, um... Senior year was really, like, one of those things. I think one of the moments that I loved was um, when we walked out of graduation, out of the New Orleans arena, and we were just so, like, excited because we had this feeling of, like, oh, my God, life. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we're ready to go. And, you know, we took that photo and stuff. And, like, I think that was something that was very special to me because it's, like, we did it. And we were together the whole time, literally together the whole time so much so that we had a conversation about needing some space i don't know if you remember i remember that one that's a funny story but um i was just thinking about that actually say it (laughs) it was a funny story because it was terrible at the same time um it was good to have it and looking back it was so funny that's what happens when you spend every day together for like six (laughs) years she used to, because she got her learner's permit before I did and eventually got her license before I did mm-hmm. really super early, like 17, 17, the beginning of the senior year. And so she had her own car and everything and she would pick me up and every single morning drop me off. And then it was towards the end of senior year where she was like, so <laughs> we were having like a, I was giving you attitude or something. I was like, I wasn't even talking. There to was you, something like, going on with you. Yeah. And I was wondering to myself where this is coming from. And I was like, did I do something wrong? I was giving you like short answers, I think. Yeah, I was like, what's changed? Am I, okay? did yeah. I mess up or something? <laughs> and then she's like, I just need space. I'm like, space? What do you mean space? <laughs> oh, like, that's so sweet. <laughs> are we not going to be friends anymore? Oh, did you, oh, yeah, you catastrophize a lot. <laughs> Still do. But <laughs> I was like, what do you mean space? And I'm just becoming a different person. And you're, <laughs> uh, you're the way you are. And I'm over here, I'm like, but that doesn't mean we have to stop being friends. <laughs> it really did hurt a yeah, little bit. I did not know that it hurt like that. Yeah. It's until recently. You apologized for it and it's okay. So. I think, I think what? That was like three or four days <laughs> where you, you, we were in. We weren't like, talking. I got rides from, or I walked to school at that point because um, we weren't picking, we weren't talking to each other. I think that's like one of the only times where we were mad or weren't talking to each other. In, in in that way, yeah. In the way where it's like something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, this sucks. But after, okay. After like day three, I was like, okay, I'm okay now. <laughs> you said it in the most non. This said it exactly that way. Did I? In the most nonchalant way. It's fine. We're My, good. I'll pick you up in the morning. And you're like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet when you tell me how you felt during that time because I, was, I wasn't really thinking. My I was best like, friend. Yeah. Oh. So. Was that your favorite memory of us? Just the most. It's one of the most fervent ones, for yeah. sure. Um, because <laughs> I have a lot of memories. Band, big one. Band, Band's a lot of a big band. One. Yep. We went on so many trips together. Trips were definitely those are highlights. Mm-hmm. I would get a pass on that one because I don't have a favorite because they're all pretty much my favorite. So. Yeah, it's so hard to pinpoint, too, because we've gone through so many milestones, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're up. Watch, I'll come up with the answer, like, <laughs> Three two, questions later. Three questions later. Oh, by the so. way. <laughs> I do get people telling us when they listen to this podcast that we're really funny. They enjoy our banter. I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. Because we enjoy our banter. <laughs> a lot. So funny. <laughs> You <laughs> want to tell them about what had you dying for like the past no, two weeks? I don't want to. No, it's an inside joke. I kind of wanted to. Uh, inside. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe at a different time. No. Okay. Okay. What is preventing me from becoming the person I want to be? Ooh. Ooh. Um. Ew. Preventing yourself. I think the easy answer is like yourself, but. That's not something I would tell you. Your only thing is stopping is yourself, Rocky. Maybe it's so cliche, and that's why we don't want to say it. I mean, yeah, in the general scheme, right? Mm. Uh, specifically, though, hmm. stopping you, something stopping you. Hmm. I think it's just your space of and, and freedom 
to do whatever whatever mm. the hell you want mm. that clarity of knowing that yes yeah, is something that i'm able to do without anyone judging me for it or giving me slack for it or you know your, your current situation right now and your living situation your living spaces like you don't have like that privacy either mm. i feel like when you when you release that when you exhale that breath look where it's like oh, i can do whatever i want it's gonna be a little easier for like to get clarity think that's something that's in your way as well and you've told me that we've had that conversation yeah i definitely feel that Mm -hmm. i feel like once i strike out on my own in the most purest in the purest sense yeah it feels good guys (laughs) from experience (laughs) give me six months i'll be there yeah i'm gonna get there Mm, for you Mm. in all honesty at this point in time (laughs) With who you are right now? <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see anything currently. Oh. So. There's some things. There's, they're probably really small, though. I'm sure, but like I said, with the current situation and who you are becoming and the things that you've had to struggle through, I don't currently... I used to. I don't currently see anything that is stopping you. Mm-hmm. What I used to see was... uh just the the loss of the motivation yes that oh, was like yes. two years ago yep and it wasn't yep. anything or anyone specific it was just got into a groove with things and this happens mm. that's Life what i happens. used yeah. that's what i used to see that was stopping you from becoming who you wanted to be is that you just kind of got into a routine you go to work and everything and got that's caught what on. kills things though yeah the habits of just oh this is normal life is normal so it's good to see that you've cauterized that, and now we're back to where you used to be. Cauterized. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Very, very good. Next question. When do you feel most secure in our friendship? Moments like these. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when we, have, when we have conversations like this. Mm-hmm. Our friendship is not... I don't want to say it's not normal. I want to say that it's not based on anything physical in the sense that mm. it's not necessarily we're friends because we like the same sports or we're friends because we like going to do the same things. We do. <laughs> we don't we have don't. a lot of interests in that way. I mean, it's it's there, but it's like. Yeah, what well, you do and what I do in terms of yeah. the, the biggest binding factor would be health and fitness. And that's what we, mm. along with any other circumstantial things that happened, like being in band and going to the same school. I remember I remember there was one time where I was was it me? I was talking about going to a different high school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you were just yeah, yeah, yeah. and you were like But no. You were set to go to Secta, our high school. Um You were set. Like you were ready. It was set for me mm-hmm. but it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah, and then you had no choice. I had no choice. I wanted to go to Rancho. I had a choice. I was like my you know my parents was like were asking her i don't know what was going on but i was like i don't know if I, but at the time my choice was like secta or green valley because i was right down the street yeah and i was like how come you're not going to green valley like i was mad and then you were like i don't know i'm not going and i was just like what you know I, at that the, the <laughs> there was a moment for me i was just like oh no 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 like this friendship is down the drain <laughs> it's gone i need more space no jesus uh, <laughs> It was a moment for me where I was just like, no, no, that's not going to happen. I don't want to go. I don't want, you know, I don't want to do band without Josh. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be there alone and, and knowing that, like, what we were doing is not going to continue. I'd rather just go to the school that he's going to. Yeah. For the fact that he's there. Aww. Yeah. I did. I remember that. Aw. <laughs> Make me cry. It's true. You're my, literally my only friend. And everyone else at the time was so ready to go to Green Valley because they had a great band program, right? And I was just like, yeah, it was, you know, that's something that we talked about. But obviously. Yeah, that is the majority of the reason why they went there. Circumstance was like, nope, that's not going to happen. So I was yeah. like, nope, then that can't happen. So. See, gals and guys, sometimes <laughs> they say you shouldn't follow people to stuff like that, schools and whatnot. Sometimes you should because look how it worked out with us. Mm hmm. Can you imagine if she went to Green Valley? And oh, I would be a different person. We'd be different people completely. Nope. And I'm not too sure it would be for the better. I'm not sure if we would be friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's when I feel the most secure is when we have these kinds of conversations because our friendship isn't based off of something 
that can be just pinpointed to one thing. Mm. Uh, we're friends because we both like the same color. We're, <laughs> we're friends. <laughs> so basic for friends. That's how I see a lot of friendships, That's though. It's like we're friends because we grew up liking basketball. Mm. Or we're friends because we like the same club. It's, you know, our friendship has become something so much more encompassing yeah. than just what our common interests are. Because you like to do stuff that I don't necessarily spend a lot of time doing, and I like to do stuff that you don't want to spend mm-hmm. a lot of time doing. And But I feel most comfortable knowing that. Yeah. Is that you're someone that, despite what happens, um, the differences between us don't outweigh the similarities, and that we'll never judge each other for the mistakes that we make inside and outside of our friendship and that's when i feel most comfortable yeah it's like when we when we have these kinds of conversations i agree i agree yeah. it's every single time we talk onto this podcast it becomes a little deeper and deeper and deeper this friendship goes down like in a great like dark abyss like you you guys don't know how much like time we've spent and it feels so like yesterday like sometimes when i think about it like the last episode we were talking about it, just back to that time. It's it feels like it's here, but it's not. But so, I can't believe it's been like twelve years. Almost, yeah, yeah. And it's a, that's a long time to Dude, be friends with somebody. Geez. So, twelve years. Twelve years. It's a very, very, very long time. Yeah, I think your question's up. Next. Was that you? Was yeah, that me? Mm, okay. Scatter Next brain. question. When was the last time you laughed so hard you oh nearly God. pissed yourself? Like two hours ago. That and like a few days ago when Josh was here hanging out. <laughs> we have this great ability <laughs> to make each other laugh without no, even trying. No, so effortless. But is that you? It's not me. It's <laughs> not me. <laughs> and you have your mask over your face. Can I please tell them? Please. Okay. Don't We're, name. Don't. Uh, it's just. It's not going to be too many details. Yeah. One of uh, our mutual friends, they have a situation where. They're running into someone that they want. They're running into people Some that they. old people. That, that they don't mind. necessarily want to reconnect with, which is understandable. I mean, <laughs> the past is in the past, and there's some people that you just don't want to. See you know, ever again. See? Yeah, it's fine. That's how life is. And so they were asking. I mean, what do I do? I don't want to talk to this person. How do? What if? What if they approach me? And I'm over here, like, just, per, just like, if they come up to you, and I, I'm just a sarcastic person. <laughs> they just come up to you, just put on an accent. It's not me. <laughs> and then cats are like, what, what accent is that? Like, what? 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 I was like, it's a Nigerian foreign exchange student. And then she said, That's, yeah, okay, I'm gonna come to work tomorrow with a with a headdress. <laughs> your mask over. With your, your, your mask face. over your face. It's not me. Is that you? No. It was so nonchalant, but I just <laughs> died. I was like, where did that come from? <laughs> and I thought about the situation in my head. Picturing like, it. Yeah. Is that you? It's not me. It's not <laughs> Why me. would you ever say that to anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love. And I, when I thought about that today, I, I thought about that again today, <laughs> putting on my shoes, and I was laughing to myself. It's it the was, silliest it thing. great. <laughs> I was dying earlier because we were, we were starting to have problems with the computer. Oh no. And I plugged it in and I was like There it is. <laughs> but then <laughs> were you saying the tipsy bartender? Yeah, and the thing that was playing in my head and I started dying loud because it was like <laughs> And then you have it <laughs> <laughs> She started dying again. It's so dying. It's so dying. It's so dying. <laughs> Spot <laughs> on. There you had Tipsy bartender. Tipsy bartender. Oh my god. That's <laughs> This is great content. <laughs> this is great. This is A one content. <laughs> <laughs> so the, to answer the, to answer that question for both of us is, when's the last time you died laughing? You pissed yourself almost. Is every time we ever talk? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's so good. It's so good. It's always something. <laughs> right. Next question. What do you think is my best quality that I'm not aware of? Hmm best quality that i'm not aware of see that's difficult because you are very self-aware mm-hmm. <laughs> something what am i not aware of 
<laughs> so how do I know what I don't know? <laughs> I don't know. Do I know what you know? Am I talking do to do me? I, am I talking to me? <laughs> um, that's another one that's funny. <laughs> what's one quality that you're not aware of that's your best quality? That's the same for you. You're also aware. It's hard when you have two self-aware people <laughs> talking to each other <laughs> who know everything about each other almost. Best quality. Uh, are you going to pass on this question? Cause we mean, it, yeah, we kind of know what we're we, we know each other pretty well. <laughs> Balance. Unless you have like a secret coming out all of a sudden. Whoa. Whoa. I'm actually part of the drug cartel. Big reveal. That's one of her best qualities. Sudden confession. What a big secret. A You're big so secret. good at keeping secrets. Oh, my God. That's one of her best qualities <laughs> that you're unaware of. That I'm in a d- drug cartel? No, that you're good at keeping secrets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I don't. Once once I get something in my ear, it never leaves if it's not in that intention. Like, you know, when people talk about stuff. Like, oh, another thing in our episodes that we were talking about, like we, what we hate. When people like just live, randomly like, tell us this, stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah. we were just talking about that earlier. Oh, I hate that so much. So, yeah, I don't yeah. care. Cool. If it's, if it's a secret that you don't want out, I'll take that to the grave. Promise. I probably will tell Josh, but that's about it. <laughs> Little disclaimer: If you're friends with either of us, <laughs> you could probably guess that we've talked about you. So, mm. not in any kind of bad yeah, way. Not in a bad way. We just tell each other like everything. <clears throat> that's how it is. That's how it is. I remember this. <laughs> I won't say what it is, but there was this one time where you told me something, oh, no. Oh, no. and it was completely out of left field. Oh no! It was. Let me say this: it was one <laughs> of your first experiences. Okay. And I was just sitting there. I'm like, I don't know how to respond to this. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh yeah. 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 That was like a new chapter of our friendship of like things to tell each other. Mm-hmm. It even happened yeah. like two weeks ago. Where you were telling me something else in that same line, and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> I am who are you?" Was not expecting that, but yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I should have guessed, but all right. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. Okay, you're up. How do I know what I don't know? Are you talk? Am I talking to me? <laughs> What's the most unique thing about me? Unique New York. Unique. Unique. Monique Jones? <laughs> <laughs> Most unique thing about Josh, I could say, is definitely that um, he's very well spoken for. He's very. Um, you're <laughs> talking to you like you're not even here. <laughs> Sudden confession. He's left the room. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> you're very um, well spo- spoken for. You have a very large vocabulary. What's unique about that is. Did you say that blarge? Blarge. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Blart Mall Cop. What's large? It's when you mean big and large. Yeah, you have a because I have a very small one apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very extensive vocabulary, and you're able to put your words like it's very. Once Josh talks, it's very authoritative, and then I like that because, like, a lot of people can't. <laughs> both and I are very. Me and Josh are both very uh, well versed in our own way. And I think, like, when I talk to him the most and when it comes to things that, like, I get off my chest or, like, feelings that day, like, it's very easy for him to, like, come back with something that um, I need to hear or is some supplemented to the fact that I'm, you know, I know what to do. But he also knows, that, like, it's like a kind of an instinct of, like, yeah, I know what you're going through and this is how I'm going to say it. And it becomes something, like, very um, kind of eye-opening and... It's a revelation sometimes because I'm like, Josh knows. He's very good at that. I think you're very good at that. You're very well spoken for. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's, it's a good energy when you talk to me and it's, I'm going through something. And it's like, okay, like it's comforting, you know? Yeah. Aww. A lot of people can't do that. I've definitely noticed. Hmm. Not calling anyone out, but like it's just the, the energy too. When you speak to people or if you've known them for a while, it's like, it's different. Everyone's different in their own way, but I feel like when I talk to Josh, there's a lot of like, um, it's like support. Like it's like, like a really big warm hug of of like <laughs> I understand, but you're better than this. You know, like, yeah, I like that. It's completely false. I tell her to get her shit together all the time. <laughs> get your shit together. 
Get it together, Karen. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. Yeah, it's true. Aw. For you, the most unique quality, and it's been there since day one, is probably the one quality that I would not have expected mm. to have been cultivated by you. Ooh. Uh, is just the confidence factor. It's the most unique thing about you. Oh. Um, and not in the classical, I'm going to conquer shit, that's it, <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> that's a good energy, though. It's a good energy, but the, the kind of measured confidence that is withstanding. And, I mean, yeah, I've seen you at certain points in your life that have been... Like when people say, oh, how could you ever be insecure? Or how could you ever yeah. not be who you are? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been the, one of the people who have seen behind the confidence. And to me, that's one of the most unique things is that the way that you cultivated it, the way that you continue to maintain it, especially during your darkest moments, over, especially over the past few months mm -hmm. that I've seen and the way that you've maintained it and even emboldened it has, without a doubt, there's nobody else who matches it that I've met so far and I'm pretty sure I won't meet anybody who has that unique tinge Yay. of how confidence is portrayed and managed and oh yeah I already know that if I need um any lessons in confidence <laughs> or yeah assurance that I can get that from you so thank you oh mm -hmm. that's so sweet I don't think about my confidence in that way but I, I know what you're talking about where it's just like oh you started from like a very like you know in school like you you don't know who you are and it's just like very shy into it yeah i started off very 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 quiet and like not wanting to talk to anybody like when i have josh just because like me and him would talk about it, it felt so comforting that's why i did not want to go to high school without him um cool. <clears throat> so yeah yeah uh, before the person that i am today like i was just not it was like day and night like i feel but i don't think about my confidence as like you know i think this is who i am <laughs> And no one's going to change that. No one's going to. There's the answer to that question Woo! from like two cards ago. The quality that's best about you is that you don't see your confidence <laughs> that way. No, we were right about that. Oh, we were right about that. <laughs> there you go. Three questions later. It happened. Yeah. yeah. And that's even more of a testament to what's unique about you and what you don't see about yourself is the confidence and just the, the need trick. It's like, well, that's just who I am. Like, that's you confidence. Talk like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just built like that. Why are you built like that? <laughs> you built like a wheelbarrow, bro. Built like a wisdom tooth. <laughs> no, I'm not built like a wisdom tooth. <laughs> Walking out the door, you hear me mumble. I was like, why are you built like that? Why do you smell like that? <laughs> oh, we're so funny. The shit talking. Oh, my God. Okay, was that my question? That was your question. Oh, okay. My next. My next. So, you're, yeah, it's your question. <clears throat> Next question. Describe the moment you most felt alive. <clears throat> alive. So this was two years ago. Um, it was a general experience, but I'll pinpoint it to... Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'll pinpoint it to two moments, but they were within the same time frame on in the roughly the same place. So uh, for those who don't know, two years ago, uh, I went to Hawaii yeah. to uh, scout out the school over there. And luckily, I was fortunate enough to have a very good friend uh, who allowed me to stay with her and her roommate. And I will always be grateful to her. Um, shout out to Jenna if you're listening. You're probably one of the best experiences <laughs> that I've ever had. Um, so with that, where I felt most alive, um, stayed there for about a month. And we did a lot of hikes, went like, to the beaches and all that kind of stuff. Um, I always catch flag whenever I tell people this story because I usually tell it when I'm drunk. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but you get to hear it when I'm sober. Wow. So it should Exclusive. sound a little bit better. Sneak peek. There's this one hike in Hawaii. It's called the Manoa Falls hike. Okay. We went there. Uh, I had never really been on a hike hike in terms of free climbing. Wow. Uh -oh. So, and it wasn't much of like it was a free <coughs> climb. It wasn't that bad of a drop. But so... There's two trails. The first trail you go on, it's very touristy. It's very marked. You, you, you have to be really, really stupid to hurt yourself on this trail. It you literally... Yourself? No. That's no. my life. That's when I felt most alive. Oh, wow. When I hurt myself. No. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so we went to the first one. It was the first waterfall. Apparently, there's like 25 waterfalls that you wow. can go to if you keep hiking higher and higher. That's crazy. It's the elevation gets crazy. Um, we were fortunate enough to have uh, one of her friends who knew the island pretty well, who knew the different hikes. That he's like, "Hey, let's go on this different trail. It's a little bit more. It's not meant for regular people to just go up on." And you'll see why. I'm like, "Okay, I'm down for anything. Hmm. I'm, I'm here in Hawaii. I'm gonna do everything I can." Yeah. I didn't really understand what he meant by not for everybody. Uh oh. So we get we go on the second trail, there's more trees, there's less markers, and it's more you're kind of feeling by sight and wow. you're just kind of looking for cues of how to get to the next waterfall. It's not marked in any way, shape, or form, aside from like a few ledges and ropes. Mm-hmm. So he got to the first rope where you kind of climb and pull yourself up. It wasn't that high. It was maybe like 10 feet taller than me. Okay. And I was like, ah, I could do that. It's like being at a jungle gym, whatever. This kept getting worse and worse. Oh, my God. And he's like, all right, so you're going to grab on this rope over here. <laughs> Easily like 30 feet above. I'm over here. I have... I'm dying from the first rope. <laughs> it wasn't even that bad, yeah. but it's 30 feet. That's a long... If night. I drop... Ooh. I have no equipment. It's literally a rope attached to a rock in a tree up there. And that happened like two or three times. And it's climbing. It's like, I'm going to die. This is wow. I'm not cool at all. But I wasn't going to back out. It's like, if I die, so be it. Oh It'll be God. something cool. <laughs> I'm not going to back out. I'm just chicken out. So climbed up the next couple of ropes, ended up crossing over. Uh, this area that was very steep and ledge. The ledge was not forgiving, so if you didn't watch how you stepped, you were not stepping the right way, and you were pretty much done for. Mm. Um, but we finally got to the second waterfall, which was easily 100 feet above the first one. At least that's what it felt like. I don't know the actual footage, but yeah. this is the point where I felt most alive at that time. Crossed over the ledge into the second waterfall. It was kind of like like a cavern mm-hmm. that overlooked it and then if you look down you see the first one where all the tourists were at yeah i remember get crossing over to the other side and it wasn't much for you to like sit on it was more of a steep down drop yeah and you had to hook yourself onto something like a rock to not slip off entirely <laughs> if you weren't careful yeah i finally settled myself after doing that and i looked out and you could see oahu you could see um Waikiki Beach, like the city. Wow. And because I worked at the stratosphere, I have a pretty good idea of what a, being high up yep. is like. Mm-hmm. I was high up, easily a thousand feet, wow. even though it didn't feel like it, just the way that the island is shaped. Yeah. But I was higher than most of the buildings, and that's when I felt most alive. That's so cool. Looking out into the distance yeah, imagine. and seeing the beach that I was there at maybe a couple hours ago. Yeah. At that distance, free climbing without any wow yeah you know mechanical support sounds so amazing that's when i felt most alive the Mm. second time it's kind of cliche but you know it was my first time we went to a rave Mm. um the same hawaii trip the same hawaii trip it was a good trip and i remember just looking around and it was one of the few times where i've never felt more connected with people Mm -hmm. i would look at every single person and i would look and see the mood they're in the way that they're feeling and I knew exactly that's the same way that I was. Yeah. It was instant connection. Yeah. I didn't have to guess at what they were thinking or feeling. I knew they were thinking and feeling the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it was just being there. And it was one of the most existential moments I've ever had. I love that. That I felt alive. Yeah. And, you know, big respect to people who go to raves all the time. I understand why. Yeah. I don't judge. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. That's cool. I didn't even know the hiking story was like, that's amazing. Yeah, that's one of these days. That's why I want to go back so bad because yeah. I want to experience that yeah. again. Not in the same way, but it's like a it's a very cherished memory of mine just to see how far I've come. Yeah. So. Okay. How about you? Most alive? Mm-hmm. Man, I'm just, I'm still imagining your, your, the height from where you're looking over and like the, uh, the, uh, like vision that you, I can't even put it together, but I can feel like the, the air up there, you know? Oh yeah. Okay. So when I most felt alive, I, I think honestly it was my first fight. Hmm. 
I trained uh, kickboxing and boxing for a year and a half. Your first MMA fight or your first wrestling match? Oh, oh, I forgot. Yeah. I had like uh, four or six wrestling matches, I think. Mm, I remember the first Ooh, one. Ooh, okay. So there's, they, both of them are, are both like milestones in my life. Um, I did wrestling, right? And that was in the story that from last episode. Um, I trained so hard to get there. I trained for a year for my first match. At the time, they didn't have any other female stars. So I was, you know, working with someone else that it was just the two of us. So that was our showcase. And yeah, I remember my first match was definitely a point in my life where I was like, I did. I did it. I you did, did exactly what you said. What I said I mm-hmm. would do. And that night was amazing. Okay. Love that. Most alive, though. Let me let me put it in perspective. Uh, wrestling matches. Yeah, I've had a few. My first fight. So after wrestling, I was into MMA. After wrestling, I started because Ronda Rousey at the time was the person, was like the number one athlete in the world for everyone to like, you know, yeah. respect and admire. Ronda Rousey was like my inspiration to do that. So after, you know, wrestling to me was getting kind of like I, was, I wasn't in it as much as I, I was. And I started like going somewhere else. I, I started doing kickboxing. I, I went to this uh kickboxing gym that I eventually worked for but anyways um, I went and did the class <laughs> I have like old videos of myself like on the bag and it's so embarrassing because me now definitely is a lot better did kickboxing mm-hmm. uh, Muay Thai um, had my first like exhibition fight after a year I think after a year and a few months I was asked to uh, do all the things I need to do even drop weight like uh, cut weight for the fight because the mm-hmm. person I was going against was smaller than me. So it was like, okay, you're going to fight her, um, but you, you, you should drop as much weight as you can. And I was like, oh, okay. And at the time, dude, I w- at the time I was vegan. So this was hard. This, I'm I not going to drop any more weight already. God, I remember feeling like, what do I have to do in order to drop weight? The tendencies that I was doing, though, definitely not healthy. Don't follow what I was doing. I was eating like slivers of almonds at work. Slivers. Two gallons of water a day. Yeah. Two gallons. I was peeing every 10 minutes because, you know, water weight, you need to flush all of that out. Mm-hmm. My, my <laughs> uh, what is it? TMI, but um, my pee was like clear. Like it was yeah. just water. Um, training up to this fight, being prepared. I remember the night before getting weighed, I couldn't sleep because I was so hungry. That night before was like the day like you're supposed to, you know what not eat at all it's like a decrescendo of like Mm -hmm. your diet after uh you're cutting weight Mm -hmm. i didn't eat anything i was up all night i I remember feeling my stomach because i was so hungry and i was also remember like you know feeling like my body because it was just so like i don't know it was like i want to say the fittest i was ever um for in that time frame because like i was water weight like it was more like defined like i had like Mm. I was ready for a fight, right? Weighed in. I, I had lost like 17 pounds in a month because <sighs> of the, the cutting weight. Don't do what I did. That was crazy. Fighters do that regularly, okay? Um, that weekend of the fight, and I get so excited when I tell this story because I was the main event. I was the main event of that As card. you should be. <laughs> I was the main event of that card. It was a <laughs> lot of fun. There were people there who never took a like fighting class before. And it was like a showing of transformation. Like, this is where I was and this is where um, I, I am in the next uh, two months. It was like kind of like a reality show setting in a way. Yeah. So, like, I was asked to do the main event fight for the person that uh, was in that program. I wasn't in that program, but I was asked to be one of the people to actually fight them. So... Like, the chick that I was fighting, super cool uh, taekwondo background. Like, mm. she knew what she was doing in a sense. So, <laughs> like, the build-up to it, being there in the the gym and also preparing myself while everyone else is fighting and doing their thing and having a card and having a fight while everyone is staring at me, too, because they're like, when are you going to go on? When are you I was the last fight. I was the last. Like, I had to wait, like, an hour yeah. before I actually was ready to go. And, like, the time, like, my coach was like, warm up, warm up, warm up, because, you know, you're not going to be ready. You're going to be last, and it's going to suck because your energy is almost going to be depleted. Walk in. <laughs> I had, like, the theme song. I was like, I did my little entrance and stuff. <laughs> That's not even the most memorable part of the fight, not at all. I remember when that uh, first buzzer hit, like like or or when the referee 
uh, was like, fight. <laughs> the feeling that I got because I was here again, I did what I said that I wanted to do oh, was yeah. actually be in a fight. Everyone at the time was like, you know, uh, I had my best friends there. Um, Josh wasn't there, unfortunately, but uh, I had like really good friends recording the fights mm-hmm. and really cool people around me. Um, uh, just the feeling of knowing that like, wow, this is what it's like because I wasn't actually, I was in a real octagon. Like the gym had a real octagon. It was like standard. Yeah. And uh, the cage and the people, there's people in the, in the seats and the bleachers. And like, I was like, this is amazing. In my head, <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, I'm scared though because I'm so tired. It's the adrenaline dump. But um, when you, when you first begin like fighting or like that first feeling of like, oh man, this is actually like real. And like the person's coming at you that my opponent was coming at me. And I was like, oh my God, like I have to hit you. Like <laughs> <laughs> almost forget. It's like, been doing this for months, but I know I should do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the time like i did it for a long time i was like this was what i was working for yeah like so grateful for the opportunity to be seen to be known to be like okay you're you can do this like you can do this you prepare yourself i think um when i tell that story like uh i always remember the feeling too how exhausted i was knowing me at the time i was the fittest person you could ever like mm-hmm. be come across and it's like i'm so tired like i couldn't breathe i couldn't like you know my opponent was kicking me in the gut and that's a big you know factor in why i couldn't breathe but still like you don't say it was like (laughs) like, (laughs) it was one of those things like being in a fight for the first time in my life working hard to that fight and then like the days before that prep prepping myself and doing this kind of on my own and having the guidance from really cool people was definitely one of the moments in my life where i was just like yeah yeah, this is right. This is this is exactly why I did this. This is exactly why, you know, I had so much fun. So cool being around everyone else and just like, you know, the recognition and like, you know, my friend at the time was taking photos of me while I was like warming up and I still have those photos and like that I have the whole video still. So it was just like uh, a big full circle for me doing that. So that's definitely one of the times I could say like I was most alive mm-hmm. being in front of people. Like wrestling, like not MMA, but like wrestling though, is definitely a, sh- a different change. Like it's a shift. It's like a culture shock. It's just like, oh, like this is what. Well, I think for you, performers see. Yeah, because yeah, it went from being a performer to actually being a fighter. <laughs> not, not to knock <laughs> yeah. wrestlers or anything like that. <laughs> it's different. It's the just crowd is different. The crowd is different, and you know the layout is different. Yeah. Yeah, when you're fighting somebody, you're fighting them. You're not. I would say that you're not concentrated necessarily on how the crowd is reacting to what you're doing Mm -hmm. it's more or less this is what's happening in front of me taking care of it wrestling you gotta have to pander pander a little bit it's entertainment you know wrestlers are actors so yeah so i had taste of both and i'll tell you like it's worth it if you guys are into it you know if you if you guys are super super into it it's worth it if you want to try and you can see the appeal for me so (laughs) yeah i would i can definitely imagine (laughs) I can definitely imagine the uh, the feeling of setting out yourself to do something and then being in the moment of actually accomplishing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether did you win or lose that day? Where uh, your MMA fight? Uh, there was no winners or losers. There was like exhibition. Okay. Like everyone it was just was the skills winner. and whatnot. everyone was the winner. Yeah, gotcha. here's the showcase. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then, yeah, that feeling of just I'm here. I did it. What I wanted to do, and yeah, super cool. Give me goosebumps. Love that. I love that for I love that for me. <laughs> we love that for her. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Next question. My was turn. Me? That was yours. Uh, oh. Okay. My turn. Yes. Okay. Not that one. <laughs> What's something you should have done but didn't? Oof. How do I know? I don't know. Right. <laughs> Am I talking to me? Um. So basically, it's a regret <laughs> question, <laughs> huh? What's one thing? It's like a regret question. Oh, one thing that something that you should have done but you didn't. I don't, I can't. That's so hard because I wouldn't be here today if I had done things differently. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's some things personally I would be like, you know, uh, pay attention to. Like, uh, in in terms of like what that means for me in like relationships it's different 
where it's just like, oh, <laughs> you know, like to, professionally to, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a professional, there's a personal version of like, what should I have done? So, um, some some things in like my relationships that shouldn't have been happening. Not even like, you know, um, if I did it differently, would it be different? I don't think so. But at the same time, it's like, wow, like I really gotta be accountable for the stuff that I'm doing. You know what I mean? Hmm. Or this, the, the thing that things at the time that felt right definitely don't look or feel right now so i mean it's a learning experience but yeah there's some things that you know i wouldn't change but definitely look at differently (laughs) yes that's different for me Mm. well i'd also have a professional and a personal one um for me the way that i see it is is that i should have changed them yeah i probably i probably have learned a lot more the way that I see it, not necess- okay, so <laughs> not necessarily learned a lot more, but I would have learned different things at different times. Uh, so professionally for me, it would have been, I should have gone to college mm. a lot, not directly after high school, but I should have not taken as much time off. And now it's not, it's not impossible. It's just, it's going to be a lot harder to get back on the horse. And now I don't even know if I want to do with that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Especially with the way the colleges are, and especially now, with the, I mean, pandemic aside, yeah, with the way that the system is, and I was telling one of my uh, one of my ex girlfriends this a long time ago, because she was enrolled in UNLV and she was doing what she wanted to do, and she asked me, she was like, "Well, you pretty much have an idea of what you want to do college wise, so what's holding you back?" And I'm like, "I've always had a problem," and I told her, "You know me pretty well. You know my abilities. You know my." Um, intelligence the things that i'm passionate about the thing that i hate most about college the way it's structured now is that i have to prove myself to somebody to say that i deserve to be here yeah yeah i shouldn't have to do that i shouldn't have to prove to you okay so from like a metric standpoint if i'm even capable of understanding material that okay fine fair enough but i have to hit a certain score for something right i have to i have to meet a certain standard um, in an area that's totally unrelated to what I want to do for you to consider me to be doing what I want to do. I just didn't like the structure. Yeah. I didn't like having to prove myself to somebody on arbitrary terms. But that being said, that is one of the things that I do wish I did differently that mm. I should have done is that I should have just bit the bullet and went to college, taking the debt on because quite frankly, I mean, money's money. It's always going to come and go. So Mm -hmm. the debt part was a big thing for me. Yeah. But I should have disregarded that. It didn't really matter in the the grand scheme of things because you can always make money. Uh, But then back and forth with myself, do I know more now? Would I have known more coming out of college? Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. I still might go. (laughs) You'll see. (laughs) It's never too late. It's never too late. too late, especially with the way things are now, online learning and just taking classes as I please. Mm Mm-hmm. I can, yeah. Um, personally, we'll just say that there's a situation that I dealt with 10 months ago, mm. uh, a leap of faith that I should have taken versus talking myself out of it. Yeah. And that's one of the hardest lessons that I've learned. <laughs> and we were talking about. We were talking about that is yeah. that uh, oftentimes the yeah. thing that you fear to do the most is exactly the thing that you should do. And I, I am not, huh, I'm not afraid to say it, that I was afraid. Ooh that I was in a headspace that did not was not conducive or nor was it true to who I was and mm-hmm. the emotions that I had and yeah. that I let fear get the better of me. Yeah. Which is, you know, sometimes you have to admit that. And it's one of the if not the biggest, it's one of the biggest regrets that I have. Yeah. And so right now still working through coping with that. Uh it's getting better and I'm learned a lifetime's worth of lessons from that one mistake. Mm. The one thing that I should have done but didn't. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could see that for sure. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to wrap uh, two more questions and then we're going to get into the outro. <laughs> what? <laughs> we have two more questions for you guys uh, or okay. for us. <laughs> and yeah. That'll call the episode, and then, well, I I want to revisit this for sure in the future. Like we could do this again, absolutely. Maybe like, we'll, there's so many stories that can come out from this. We'll pick up a different kind of game like this. <laughs> oh, 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 pepper chest. Oh man, 
It was a good idea before, but now I'm kind of like... No! What do you mean? Well, I just, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm not. Does that make I'm sense? Me neither, but like it's going to be fun. And the expensive people watching. <laughs> the expensive people watching. <laughs> we have this idea, and it's going to be a really good one, guys. Uh, in the future, we're going to play Pepper Chess. And it's going to be uh, corresponding sauces for each specific piece on the board for chess. We've been playing chess lately, so I um, think that'd be a really good game. We're going to eat each other's uh, peppers, the sauce that are coming out when we capture a piece. And yeah, the king checkmate, the goal of chess is to capture the king checkmate. That that piece is going to have the hottest sauce because it's a loser. And I can't wait to have that on YouTube. You guys subscribe to this uh, channel if you guys haven't. <laughs> my stomach already hurts thinking about it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, is it my question? Yes. Hmm... Oh my god Give me some of yours These questions are mm. not fulfilling me at the moment <laughs> See now we know who has better taste Nyeh. Nyeh. Nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. <laughs> <laughs> These questions that I'm reading right now <laughs> okay, okay, okay 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 <laughs> Keep in mind I have to pick one too so <laughs> Yeah Uh uh, when was the last time I surprised you with something? This podcast. No, that is not. This last time I surprised you was making this podcast. Not making it, telling me about it. Ah, because it came out of nowhere. It really oh. did. I don't know. Well, that I mean, true. Are we talking like gift wise? Because we don't really get each other it's gifts. Anything like that. that surprised you caught you off guard. Was this podcast for sure? For real? Was this podcast the only yeah. other time that I can think of is extremely personal, and I'm not going to say it. No. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know what that is. I'll tell That's you after. Scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you after. <laughs> Behind the scenes. But yeah, it was this podcast, and hmm. um, uh, I never saw it happening. Not in the sense that I didn't think you couldn't do it or that we couldn't do it, it. Just because it was just like what? Just start <laughs> a podcast. <laughs> like, okay, Ooh. well, I'm yeah. down for that. And yeah. I was like, the. Uh, I mean, we kind of broached the topic, but it was more we were talking about you being an actor, me being yeah. an actor. Maybe this will segue into that. Mm. Who knows what happens? Yeah. Um, but that's the last time that I was genuinely surprised. Because whenever you tell me about things that you're doing, <laughs> I'm like, that sounds about right. Yep. But a podcast is not one of them. Really? Yeah. Not like I said, not because I don't think you were capable. Clearly, we are. Hello. Hello. But um. <laughs> It wasn't something that I saw being part of your repertoire mm. of what you wanted to do. I just, you know, it was I, one of those things too that kind of like it organically came out of yes, the lessons. Yes, yes, yes. That we that we have both gone through the past couple months. Yes. So. Yes. Um. Surprise! Is it my turn to tell you? Yeah, if oh, you want to. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how surprising I can that's what be. I, that's what I'm, to, I'm pretty. Not that you're not a surprising person, but just like you know, we know each other well enough. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, no, it was surprising. Uh, for me, when it comes to surprises, especially when it comes to Josh, like I don't. It, it, some things that like make sense, and then some things I just like. Oh, like that's interesting, but I don't <laughs> ever. <laughs> I don't ever get caught off guard. Because you're like, a, you're like, like a parent who's like, oh, that's <laughs> nice. I understand, <laughs> but I never get caught off guard too bad, like okay. too much. It's oh, like So then what was the last time I caught you uh, off guard? I don't know. Must not have been that oh, big. No, it was. It was you were going through a really rough time, and you were going through this like binge of, you know, partying. Oh. Yes. Okay. Th- I think that was the last time that caught me off guard. You're partying and like, you know, going through these rough patches and uh, breaking down. And I've never seen that before because at that time our friendship wasn't, you know, as vulnerable as, as we as it's gone. We were. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that that definitely caught th- me off guard. OK. I think that was the first time that I ever actually like broke down in front of you. Yeah. You were a little drunk. A Which little is bit. how usually that stuff goes. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. But that was definitely surprising for me because I was just like, wow, like, wow, like, yeah. you're going through all this. Like, th- that was one of the bonding moments as well. So, 
Yeah, I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> not that I had to see it, but it was just one of those moments where I was like, yeah, this dude's a real person. <laughs> this dude's a real human being. Well, I, yeah, because I think <laughs> up until that point that you had never, neither of us no, yeah, exactly. had ever seen each other so vulnerable. Mm-hmm. For me, that was mm-hmm. that was this year for me, for you. Yes. was when I saw you at your most vulnerable. So many times. Yeah. So, so many times now. Yeah, and it's just kind of like, yeah, okay. It's not as shocking or surprising. Not in a bad yeah. way. We are com- we can cry in front of each other, which is like hard to say for the other Crying right now. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, it's hard to say for other people, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I definitely noticed that. Is that uh, some people choose not to show that side of themselves to even their best friends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to each his own. Yeah. Whether or not you're comfortable. Yeah, sometimes I don't. I cry and I, I can't text you or something like that. It's not that I can't. It's more like I... Uh, for me, it's like a, almost like a personal battle, like where I'm just like crying. Yeah. It's like sometimes I don't need to reach out to people. It's yeah. just more of like a, I'm doing this for myself. Yeah, I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing this for myself. Yeah, I've noticed that with one other person. That's another lesson that I've learned. Yeah. Is that sometimes ugly? Stop. Kitty. Little cat on the table. <laughs> Is that uh, sometimes there are personal battles that are meant to be fought with oneself and not through the lens or with the help of other people no yeah. matter how much you want to help them and uh something that i've learned from you something that you've learned from me mm-hmm. and that's where we're at now one more question we're out of here because this podcast is definitely a lengthy one lengthy one my question one more question pick a good one well then i'll just go through all of them yeah. at this point get this cat off the table <laughs> and come on kitty messing with the equipment kitty 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 That one. Mm. If you guys don't know, we're on Spotify and we're on iTunes. So uh, if you guys have subscriptions to both, make sure you save this podcast and follow us for future episodes. Um, Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I don't know by the time I release this, I'm going to have a Facebook page, but... (laughs) <laughs> like the Facebook page if this is out. If it's not, then wait for it. I, I that's gonna be while I'm recording this. Yes, that's gonna be soon. So hopefully by the by the time like you guys see um, that Facebook page up, and I would I, me and Josh are gonna do more videos so we can have like more visual content as well. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Definitely with the pepper chess. I feel pepper like you're gonna, you're gonna have to see our reactions. Oh, get the ice cream ready. Jeez. Okay, you ready? Yes. How do you describe me to others? Ooh, that's a good question to cap this episode off. Okay, Ooh. so I always talk about, like, when people don't know who my best friend is, uh, the first thing I say, obviously, is like, oh, he's, this dude's my best friend. I've known him since we were in seventh grade, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the first thing I say. And then, like, it gets a little more detailed. I'm like, yeah, we've known each other for this long, and we've gone through so many things together and uh, shared so many moments together. Like, we were... Like we're each other's best friends, like like siblings, not intentionally, but I feel like in this lifetime, that is what I feel like is like we're going through this journey together, and we completely it it I almost say that like too like we bring each other's like we have balances for each other, like we balance each other out in what is the situation and what's going on, and it's so easy for us to like keep whole again like like bring back to a whole like yin and yang right it's like a yin and yang kind of energy because yeah. i have things that um i need to be balanced out with uh specific like um energies and so does josh so i always i always say that like you when 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 you're you're the push and i'm the pull like you you like you motivate me and like there's fire there when I need it, and then the pool is like I, I kind of ground you and bring you back. And like, yeah, this is what the dis- this is. So there's this like so like a perfect symmetry of this push and pull, like a yin and yang. Like that's how I describe you to people, and then that's how I describe a relationship to other people. Hmm. And I'm also like you know this is dude that makes me laugh. <laughs> Pretty much, it's 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 either that like descriptive or it's just like oh yeah, it's my best friend forever, and like we laugh about stupid things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of this friendship was based off of stupid stuff so family guy family guy was one of them yep yeah yeah so that's how i uh definitely describe this this Aww. part yeah Aww. it's true though it's definitely more prevalent now notice like the push and pull yeah 
Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll do another episode about this where we talk about our charts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, astrology. <laughs> We're both into astrology. Yes. Watch for future episodes. For future episodes. We'll talk about that stuff, what yeah. we learned. Um, For me, yeah, very much what you said, the push and pull. I have... I'm a dreamy idealist, and she's a very much a uh, pragmatic realist in a lot of ways. So we do kind of keep each other going in mm-hmm. certain ways. Um, for her, the way you know, this is the, the one memory that I have of her when I was talking about. This is actually after the fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was when I was working at Stratosphere, and. Um, I can't remember exactly how, but I had gotten like this coupon where we could go to the restaurant up top. I do remember. Oh my god, that was in my head before you even started talking. Yeah, that's the that's <laughs> the one time that I like. This is this is exactly how I describe her because <laughs> when I brought you, oh my god, I do. Remember. I had talked to a lot of my coworkers and a lot of my friends at work. Like, hey, before I even yeah, they're all like, oh, I'm clearly your best friend, Josh, and I'm all like, no, you're not. You don't even come close. <laughs> oh, you're nothing like my best friend, and you have no no hands on her at all <laughs> in terms of who she is and how great she is yeah oh and so that's like what i've said for years over there and um what is it so we end up going to dinner up there to take pictures the you were wearing um this is back during your glutes days oh my god what was i wearing you were uh, wearing, like, wearing leggings no you were wearing short shorts no it was short nice. shorts and a denim jacket You're cut off kidding i thought you go look at the <gasps> pictures oh telling you oh yes yeah so yes. and this oh. is also when you were like getting that was one of my like you know, best times bulking but you were like muscular was i doing mma yes no this was before mma this is when you had your short hair no it wasn't yeah this is like in between no i know what you're talking about you know what i'm talking when about we, we went to dinner right yeah no i, I had long hair no you didn't yes i did Maybe okay, not as long as I. Eh, never mind. <laughs> Maybe I remember what I was wearing. It was like a gold, almost sheer. Like there was a gold like word on it, but it was sheer. And I had a jacket over it, mm-hmm. and then I had. Sh- I'm not sure if it was shorts or leggings, but it was shorts. Okay, I remember shorts. because I got a lot of questions about your legs. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, this is also yeah. the time when you started getting tatted up, and oh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the fact, the next day that I came to work, everybody's like, "Who's that?" Like, that's my best friend. And you're like, <laughs> "Yeah," and I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "She's badass." I'm like, "Exactly. She can kick your ass." Yes, I was and doing my Yep. That's how I describe uh, you to everybody. Is like, you know, that's my best friend. She's probably one of the most badass people that I know. Without mm. a doubt, one of the most confident people that I know, and quite frankly, I'm lucky because I don't think anybody would have a friendship the way that we do. Yeah, like that. Mm-hmm. They're like. And it's one of, one of my proudest moments whenever people are like, especially a few people who consider themselves my best friend. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, there are people that I know and I do call them my best friend. Yeah. But they're not my uh, best, the, the best friend. The <laughs> yeah, same. And people, I was like, we're clearly the best friends. And over here, I'm telling them, like, you fucking wish. <laughs> so, oh, by the way, no. <laughs> oh, by the way, that. And they all get booty hurt too. And I'm like, booty hurt. it's not that we're not good friends. We are. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't hold a candle to her. So. It's been a, we've been in each other's lives for a long time. And yeah, it probably will be. Probably will be for That's so sweet. the rest. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not to scrap people. It's <laughs> badass. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys that's gonna be the end of this episode thank you so much for listening to us the end um yeah all the links and stuff are going to be down below in this description box and all that good stuff uh, i'll see you we'll see you next time in the next episode the next episode tackling more about life and the stories and them um this has been cat attacks life josh any last words there's a literal cat attacking your computer right now. That's so true. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> stay safe. Stay connected. And I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm trying to be deep here, but it's not working. Right. Maybe that's just our friendship in a nutshell is that we try to be deep, but we just end up laughing about stupid shit. Oh, my God. I can't wait to hear this back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. And there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the podcast. I love it. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye.